Good afternoon, Beck Bignall, and welcome to the Upland Consulting Zoom Room. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank you. As we were just discussing, the Zoom Room is all about showcasing really interesting and innovative regional businesses. At Upland Consulting, we're big believers in regional business. We're big believers in the, the skills, the innovation and the entrepreneurship of regional business leaders. So um, delighted to have you join our series and have a chat with us about yeah. your business, Beg. Um, but let's um, begin at the beginning. Beg, you're, you're a Koji girl. That's right. Yes. Koji, yeah. born and bred. Very mm -hmm. proud of coming from Koji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. And you went away, as young people do, for some work experience and then decided to come back and make your career at Encogen up, yeah? Is that correct? Well, the way that I sort of work is I sort of move all over the place because um, the nature of what I do is like you kind of have to be in a lot of different places. So mm. I um, set myself up so that I could be remote because I, like, I'm in the creative space and the arts and growing up in coaching up like my parents covered a lot of distance to get me to things that were kind of going on um but we still couldn't have the same level of access to things that our friends in the city were enjoying so for me um i sort of had to like to get to the level that i wanted to be at from an ambition point of view i had to first go to um, the city in perth and then from perth i went over to sydney and now I've been able to set up a remote business where I work between um, regional WA and um, Sydney. So um, at the moment I'm back in WA um, and I've sort of spent most of this year uh, in Coaten up and uh, then had a few months back in Sydney and now I'm back in WA and I'll be based between Coaten up and I'm actually doing some work in Bremer Bay as well. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> an, an, another very pretty place, Bremer. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. place. Yeah. yeah. So, um, not many people have been able to commute between Sydney and Cochin up this year. <laughs> um, and I understand you're currently in quarantine. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely so, a lot of you doing this last year. <laughs> the <year's laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, that must really impose some cost on your business. The, uh, the moving around and the time delays and so on. Mm, yeah, it does. I mean, we try to be pretty strategic about it. Um, mm -hmm. But the beauty of having a remote business is that, um, you know, we, we set up the operations remotely about four years ago. So before COVID was obviously even a thing. Um, and it does mean that we're able to work. So we represent regional Australians, um, regional creatives and media makers all over. Um, regional Australia, uh, with the base primarily being uh, coaching up, as you said. Um, but yeah, it's it's given us an opportunity to, you know, like we don't really need to be physically in a place unless we're doing a production. Um, and then outside of that, you know, people don't really, uh, like we, we deploy people on the ground. So we can actually reduce the travel cost because of the model of the business, which is good. It's just, if we're doing a production, obviously I have to be there. Mm, mm. Yeah. yeah, good model. And I, I um, actually, didn't, we didn't finish talking just now about when you left coaching up for the big wide world to establish your professional career. Um, that was specifically in media production and particularly in TV, is that correct? Uh, basically, I sort of, I had an idea that I wanted to tell stories, like regional Australian stories that were more um, meaningful to me than what I'd sort of seen uh, on TV um, or read about um, that I sort of had always been inspired to tell those stories because also growing up in Coaching Up, my grandma is a historian, so she um, cultivated like a love of writing, and my mum as well um, was is like very creative. And so I think just having growing up on a farm and having like access to nature, we were really encouraged to tap into our imaginations, which um, I did from a very young age, and so. I also really enjoyed the community that I'm part of in Kojana, which is such a dynamic community. And there's such a vast spectrum of amazing people who are extremely creative. And I think the bush lends itself to creativity because you've got the, you, you're in nature, which is like creative in itself. 
And then also you've got um, this limitless space around you and you're sort of on a different time than the city as well. So people have more time to reflect, you know, people are driving distances, so they're kind of inspired by things. And um, I also could see that people that were really talented just weren't getting access to creativity because of where they were living, which I thought was ridiculous because I thought if some of these people that I know exist out here that have been influential in my life had access to some of the creative opportunities that city people have, it would not only benefit the regions, but it would also benefit the storytelling um, legacy of Australia and also the um, representation of diversity and just a whole lot of things that I thought Australia could sort of improve with. So um, that kind of drove me. So I didn't really have any specific intention in terms of ending up in any one particular area. It was more that I was um, grounded by this like natural instinct to want to kind of be involved in making that access better mm. for regional players and also, um, yeah, being involved in kind of showcasing different perspectives on life in Australia and, and greater, um, you know, greater airtime for regional Australians. So, mm. yeah, that I sort of, you know, just followed the wind, I guess, and ended up where I am. <laughs> Oh, what a fantastic dream to, to start start with. And, and um, I guess to pick up a, a few themes there, it, it it is true, isn't it? And it, it's become very apparent to me since my wife and I moved out of the city 13, 14 years ago that so much that's interesting and important and worthwhile that happens in the regions is just below the radar in the city. It's just not Absolutely. visible. Yeah. It's, you're right. And I think the other thing is, because regional Australians aren't as um, involved in storytelling, whether that's, you know, from a, a journalism point of view or film and TV or, um, you know, whatever sort of sector that is. And it comes down to, again, like I could see when I was working in Sydney that there was a significant lack of rep, um, regional Australians working at, you know, in jobs where you're kind of tasked with controlling a narrative, I suppose. So like, and, and that also goes to advertising as well, which advertising is obviously very influential. So I'm a perform I'm an actress as well. So I would often be involved in um, commercials and things like that. And I would see, and also cause I do marketing, I work on the other side of that as well in, um, you know, in creating um, creative campaigns and stuff. And I could see that city organizations that were getting these big regional campaigns were telling that story through a, um, a city lens. So it was missing the nuance of the environment and it really kind of contained the um, story in this like kind of older, like more conservative and maybe a little bit romantic notion of what regional Australia looks like. That was mainly a, um, a white middle-class farmer with a Macubra was like a, a pretty strong image that kept coming up. Mm. And obviously, um, I knew from my experience that that certainly isn't the only participant in the regions. Um, and also, was just interested in how we can change the conversations around the portrayals to give you know other regional people a greater opportunity to kind of see their ambition beyond what the stories are that they keep seeing told to them, mainly mm. by city people and, and we've done a fair bit of work on this. What's interesting is that that narrative has perpetrated to such an extent that country people actually kind of like that representation because they're comfortable with it because it's something that's been reinforced. So even though it's actually quite far away from how we're living, it's very modern, there's so much like as your company has exposed and does great work in the entrepreneurial space, the innovation, like people in the country and naturally innovative because they yes. don't have, you know, their meals delivered to them um, <laughs> by Uber or they, they have to like, you know, really solve problems um, on a daily basis. And a lot of that story has been lost as well as the, um, you know, the ex significant amount of community volunteering that happens, um, the very vast range of people that live here um, mm. and, you know, like the, the different people being represented across socioeconomic backgrounds, like all of that sort of stuff has been largely removed from that mainstream story. 
And I think that the richness and the depth is in those other areas <laughs> that yeah. hasn't been um, showcased. So it's for me, it was about empowering, empowering the people on the ground who should be supported, who haven't traditionally had access, and then also advising city people or just kind of bringing it to their attention that there is this plethora of experience and people and voices and opportunities that haven't been represented. And that's sort of, I guess, how the business came about, where I was able to build this network of regional media makers to say, why don't you let them tell their own story? Because then you're going to start to get the nuance that these people have just because naturally they're in these communities. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you give them a chance, it'll also build the creative confidence in these communities and mm. it will change the perception, you know, bit by bit over time. Mm, yeah. Yeah. What, what a fantastic story. And, and it's, it's wonderful. And I just picked up one of the last things you said there that not only is this about presenting the stories of regional Australia in their own light, not, not framed by city conventional views of what we're mm. like, but, but also this is about using regionally based talent to tell those stories and to get them out to the public. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I think there's still an attitude in the city and I think I'm really lucky, like a, a lot of the, I think initially I was sort of very self-conscious about the fact that I live, have like I basically straddle both worlds because mm. in both worlds, people kind of don't think you're authentic enough if you're not a hundred percent foot, like to both feet in. And then I started to realize it was actually a massive advantage because I was getting to see you know, probably similar to you having gone, you know, having that city background, you kind of seen both sides of the story. And yeah, it, it was really interesting for me because I could get a sense of where the um, bottleneck was happening in terms of like city people not getting to see like the authenticity and having conversations with people in the city and, and kind of explaining to them, you know, this is, um, this is, these are the realities in these areas. It, it broke down a lot of assumptions that have, that have caused divides and things. But the other attitude that I found that wasn't particularly helpful is um, this idea that the city knows better than the country, like that it's the aspiration. And so I was like very interested in flipping that on its head because I could see there were so many ways that the city could learn from the country, like things such as getting back to nature, investment in imagination, problem solving entrepreneurialism that we've discussed, a whole range of things, community, culture, a whole range of different things that, um, you know, the city's become rather fragmented and disconnected in a way because, you know, just the nature of how the city's built. And so I tried to also explain that maybe we shouldn't be looking at it such as the city gives the country a hand rather that the city invest in talent in the country and then you know like for example when things happened it's it's always this thing of like oh let's help the poor country people <laughs> they need our help and obviously support is wonderful but it's also the thing of well let's kind of switch that a little bit so it's more about empowering so if you've got a job instead of giving it to someone in the city let's find someone in the country that could do that job um, in the same way, if not better, given the nature of the job. And then you're actually returning to the local economy anyway because you're supporting it, but you're doing it in a way where you're actually building capacity and confidence as opposed to this idea that you're, um, you know, being charitable or like, you know, helping out. So um, certainly this year that idea has really started to gain a bit of traction with organisations and we've really seen um, that integrity and investment in the um, regions be a lot, like a lot more genuine, not like tokenistic. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah, that that is that is wonderful, and I think it's so true. Um, we, we've we've talked about the innovation and the entrepreneurship in the regions, which in Australia has been the case since colonial times. I mean, all of those inventions, stump jump plough is a conventional example, but dozens and dozens of others that came out of the necessity to solve problems in the region on your own. <laughs> um, but the, I guess the other feature that you touched on of, of life in the regions, and it has certainly struck me very forcibly over the years, is that community, the volunteering, everybody participating. I mean, the, the um, 
the volunteer bushfire brigades, for example, they're really important social glue, as as well as being frontline defence against against the fire peril. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think regional Australia has such a great story to tell. I think the story's been selective, and I think it's supported. You know, you know, it's been used kind of strategically in certain ways, but there's so much more depth to it. I mean, there's a story that's um, really important that doesn't get nearly enough support on a national level. The Indigenous story, the um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander story just is not um, you know, supported as it should be. And there's so many talented people that I'm friends with that are um, actually in one of the series that we've just created, which I'm really excited for us to showcase because um, yeah, there's just, there's not that, that support as well for really important stories that could also actually help us um, have really important conversations. And I think, you know, it, it's about everyone and, and a lot, like you just mentioned in terms of people coming together, I think one thing that I love about regional Australia is the help and support and the, the fact that people will, you know, um, drop everything to go and, and to help in, a, in the case of a fire. Like mm. I, I was explaining to a city person that like if there's a bushfire or a fire on someone's property at harvest time, they're all like everyone will just drop what they're doing and go and help fight wherever that fire is. And I said, it's the equivalent. Like I said, you just don't see that in the city because for, for some of these people, that's like their entire, you know, that's their annual income that yeah. they like put a pause point on to go and help their neighbour. And I said, it'd be a bit like someone like in the city, you know, you, you just wouldn't see someone from an um, investment banker going, oh, look, I've had this terrible day. I'm about to lose, like, <laughs> I'm about to lose everything. Can you come over and, like, <laughs> help me out here? And so it really is, I think, the, um, I think the support that is in the regions is such a wonderful story that's definitely mm. not mm. told enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Beck. And it, it's it's a very strong sense of community that that I think everyone has, but it's also a very inclusive community. I, I mean, there there are people, and obviously I'm not going to name names, but there are people sort of living on the fringes of towns like ours, um, and people keep an eye out for them. Mm -hmm. They may be a little bit different. They may not have quite got their shit together in life, you know but um, they're still considered part of the community. And if something bad was going to happen to them, the community would extend a hand to them. Whereas I think a lot of those people in the city would finish up friendless living under bridges and probably die yeah. young. You know. Yeah, no, definitely. I think there's a real separation that, um, like one of the themes of the series that we look at is like, you know, whether or not you could be lo lonelier living, you know, a wall away from someone than like living five k's away from someone and i've had friends who have come from the city moved to the country and said that they felt more connected and supported with neighbors that were like a good 10 minutes drive than they ever felt when they had neighbors sort of next door and um, like i think it's also important to acknowledge that like uh, communities in the regions aren't without their problems like and it's not about sort of sure. Um, you know, hiding hiding things under the carpet in any um, in any shape. Like I think it's really important to give people a voice, so they can sort of start to address. Like, and that's I guess where the nuance comes in is that there's it's really important to pick up on all of the little pieces of these things and giving regional people the chance to take back the power to discuss things that affect them specifically and look at some of those tensions and pain points are it, like is really important for um, the culture of Australia and for everyone. Mm. It, it's about showing an authentic picture of it. And, and authenticity means that like, that does mean we need to address some of the awkward tension and stuff that exists as well, mm. um, which I think is a big part of the storytelling that we're trying to do as well is we're not trying to create this sort of romantic notion of um, life in the bush that sort of that, um, you know, like, that image that even though that's a part of it and we still cover um you know like the the romance of it it's also about being um like giving people the opportunity to have their own voice and and what they want to say even if it doesn't agree with you know the ideal idyllic yeah. sort of picture yeah mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think that's so true. And I, I think that one of the strengths of those community groups, whether it's the bushfire brigades or the CWA mm -hmm. or whatever it is, the, you know, the town main street committee, um, they're diverse enough in viewpoints to have real ding dong arguments with each other. Yeah. But still, if there's a fire or someone's in trouble or the shit hits the fan, you're there for them. No question. Yeah. Exactly, definitely. Yeah, you're right. That's really important, like to give people the opportunity to think differently and to be supported in having those different thoughts, I think is really, really important. Um, and I guess that's where creativity comes in as well. It's, it's really about people being able to express themselves. And one thing that we've noticed, which is awesome, and that we're trying to kind of do some work in is allowing everyone to see themselves as creative, because sometimes you go into these communities and people sort of say, oh, I'm not, like I don't paint or I, I'm, so I'm not, I'm not a creative person. And what we did in this series that we've just done is, um, which is coming out next year, we worked with the entire community and cast people in roles um, like, you know, shearers, business people, um, nurses, teachers, engineers, mechanics, everyone. And they, they honestly took to it like a duck to water, like they all learnt their lines perfectly they really got into the characters like non-actors mm. or across a whole range of different people and it was really great because it allows people to realize that creativity like everyone's inherent inherently creative mm. and it's a nice way for people to kind of um you know tap into something that's inside them um, and find their story and that can be really beneficial for all sorts of reasons such as like mental health or for you know coping through something that can be really difficult um, and it also again you know like the, di the different stories that exist that we hear are just so interesting it also makes other people think you know like that, that people sometimes forget that their story um, will have an impact on someone else and yes. teaching yeah. people how to express themselves um, mm. I think is really important and that means you know just because you don't have crazy kind of hair and wear colorful clothes and like <laughs> you know look like a creative it doesn't mean that you're not you're not creative and I think some of the most um, like some of the things I've seen where it's just been super exciting um, is when the antithesis of what you would sort of visualize as a creative comes to the party and like you know kind of um a, you know embraces it and, and and taps into it and you're just like wow that like <laughs> amazing you know like i'm talking yeah, yeah shearers and farmers mm. and, mm. um yeah. mechanic like oh, yeah it really yeah. really great stuff and yes. shows the potential that exists as well yeah 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 absolutely right and it, oh it's endlessly fascinating to me just living in these regional communities and mixing with people. But um, there's also a business side to what you do, of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, so your your audience for the, this um, flow of stories from regional Australia and, and and who buys them and who's watching and listening. Yeah. So it's been pretty great because um, I guess again the, the business that we've got we have been able to do some really amazing stuff on like an international level as well so that has um i guess provided like a really great um aspirational model for people that are in the regions who want to kind of get to the top level of ambition and then so essentially i have a company that is basically a new media production company and we create all sorts of things um and have series such as film is film and TV. We had a series that this year was acquired by Netflix, has been on the BBC, ABC, all of that, so Channel 10. Um, and then we've got this one that will be um, premiering next year that's been supported by Screen mm. West and Telstra and AWI, AMP and a bunch of other amazing businesses and the, all the local shires actually. So um, the yeah. Great School Development Commission, um, Kojanuk Shire, Broom Hill, Tamble Upshire all came on board, which is amazing. Um, and then separate to that, so they're kind of like our flagship um, things that we kind of, the idea is it's a bit like a funnel. So we've got an agency of talent that spans all over Australia, creative talent in the backgrounds of photography, videography, um, writing, art, um, fashion design, performance, basically everything. 
So we then work with businesses all over Australia to um, commission our creatives on the ground for whatever work that they might have. So at the moment we're doing, we've actually got someone today who's up, two guys today who are working up in Townsville to do a story for the Australian Rural Leadership Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, we had someone doing photos in Mandra on um, Monday for another job. Um, and so we're basically, we attach the media stringers that we've got to um, big, you know, creative campaigns and a whole range of different creative work. Um, and again, the, the idea is that instead of sending for someone from the city into the region to do that work where they would ordinarily be paying travel and um, again, getting that kind of come through a city lens, we sort of encourage people to hire on the ground and um, yeah, so every week it's different in terms of what work we get. Um, COVID has been, we've been one of those situations where we've actually gone, you know, people have suddenly understood what it is that we're doing, took a global pandemic <laughs> to get there, but yeah. um, because they've had no opportunity to travel, they've been forced to use us in some cases um, because, <laughs> you know, they can't kind of get through the borders and stuff. So they've had to hire on the ground. So yeah. we did pick up a surge of work um, because of borders being closed, which was really helpful because it then, you know, people kind of got a sense of what it was that we were doing. Mm. And there's sadly been a bit of a stigma around the quality of regional creatives, which, mm -hmm. um, which is bizarre and it was something that I've had to advocate for a really long time. Like I'm, I'm very unsure why someone would be paid less just because they live um, away from the city. Um, and so I have to work really hard to make sure that, you know, our creatives are paid um, the standard rates and, and what they should be. And it's, it's just been harder because it means we almost have to prove ourselves twice as hard from a quality point of view. Yeah. Um, to kind of erode that stigma. And I think this year has been an opportunity for us to get some of the bigger jobs that we probably wouldn't have had, like people wouldn't have had the confidence in us just because of this stigma. And then they've seen how well our creatives work together. Our creatives are so autonomous because they've been used to working remotely for so long. So we've got a team that was just working up in Queensland and we had a writer, a biographer and a photographer. And the, the collaboration was just like nothing I've ever seen. And I've worked in a lot of creative teams um, mm. and the client was so impressed because they just, you know, they were just blown away by the, um, the attitude as well of these media makers. That, mm. um, it, it's just amazing. And I actually get a bit emotional about it because sometimes we'll do a big project and we'll have a lot of regional media makers on a Zoom talking through the different aspects of the project. And just the people, the caliber of people, like mm. their talent is second to none, but they're just, their attitude is so great, you know, like mm. they just um, inspire me constantly. And, and that comes through with the clients. So this year has actually been a great opportunity for us to show the quality that, you know, these creatives mm. have and to kind yeah. of disprove that um, yeah. theory that, that regional creative shouldn't be paid as much just because like crazy. I don't know where it came yeah. from, but it's very yeah. frustrating. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I yeah. said, this has been a turning point. I think people are starting to see that, um, yeah, that there is amazing talent and, yeah. and it's better than I think the city. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And, and it's great to hear. I think you're so right. I mean, there is sometimes a little bit of a regional cringe, like, you know, we're, so they're not quite major league, but we've got everything in the way of talent and skills and knowledge that they have in the cities. Um, Absolutely. And I, I think in some ways it, it's COVID-19 has actually been quite good for regional Australia. It's um, forced things to, to go regional in ways. I'm thinking yeah. tourism is an obvious one in WA. Yeah. All mm -hmm. of those people who were suddenly taking holidays in their own backyard in WA and found out how wonderful it was. Yeah. But um, there's been a lot of other reliance on more local resources as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you're right. It goes back to that thing of flipping that um, idea that um, the country needs help from the city. And I think it's been a great mm -hmm. opportunity for the country, like particularly given that country, like regional people deal with isolation all the time. And they've been able to, you know, in, I've seen a lot of situations where regional people have sort of 
been able to support people that are going through lockdown and things like that with, you know, tips mm. on, on how to kind of cope with it and stuff like that. So, mm. um, yeah, I certainly think, and I think as we recover from this as well, the regional mindset will be really important and hopefully people listen to it at that higher level because there's just so many, um, you know, like going back to that innovation, like I think, you know, like a lot of the industries that are in the regions, they do have to have that agile kind of adaptable mindset. Mm. Um, there's a lot of things that are out of their control all the time. And so I think those sorts of um, processes and ways of thinking and stuff will be really helpful to the city. Yeah. And one thing I'm interested in is that cross pollination. So the idea that we like as a country as a whole kind of move outside of our silos and have discussions like this, like I think what you're doing is great because mm. You know, I learn from other industries what people are doing in a completely different industry than mine. They might have much better financial literacy or, um, you know, and there's a way that you can reciprocally, reciprocally exchange um, insights and stuff like that that can always improve your business and the things that, you, you know, or your vision or mm. and just mm -hmm. your values and how you live and stuff. And so I yeah. would like to think that regional Australia might get more of an opportunity to participate um, in dialogue on a kind of major level next year when people are moving through this, whatever that recovery phase from COVID is going to look like for us. Yeah. 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 Of course. I, and I agree with you and I, I hope the same. And I, I think it will come about. And I think it's also being facilitated by the fact that some very talented in demand people from the cities have decided they don't actually live, need to live there. You know, exactly. they, can, yep. they can live somewhere much nicer between ourselves yep. Um, yep. Yes. And, and still do the wonderful work that they do. Absolutely. I think yeah. two points about how the regions have um, been able to, you know, shine during this period is also because remote work has increased so much. So people have been, you know, being able to go and, and live in environments that are sort of more open and kid friendly and stuff like that. And I, I do think there is a trend for people mm. to, or will be a trend, um, particularly with cost and things like that, for people to kind of gravitate to these regional areas and see that they can have the same access to not be fearful about, you know, mm. going back in their careers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Purely on a technical level, just while we're on that, um, the kind of work you do obviously involves a lot of bandwidth. I mean, yes. video, high definition video <laughs> is high bandwidth. And um, I've seen this problem of digital infrastructure holding yes. back regional businesses over a number of years. Do you, do you find that's improving? It's probably like I think it's another really interesting point because I think that people in the city totally forget the kind of um, like challenges that that imposes on to business because like even for myself I'm talking to regional people all the time and when I'm in Sydney I just forget like you know one of the people that I work really closely with she's in Grenfell and like every second time we go to talk there's an issue with her reception and so she's like you know mid conversation is great idea and then I just lose her and yeah. so we go through that whole rigmarole and it, it's that mm. thing of you know like I had a contract once that I had to print um, in Koji and the, it was an overcast day and I just couldn't get there um, it, it just took like half a day to do something that would have usually taken five minutes and I, I think it's um, like almost like there should be some kind of um, <laughs> you know percentage of support that's given financially like some kind of rebate or something because it makes it that extra bit harder i do a lot of work with um telstra and i know that they're really trying to um you know they do a lot of stuff that they're trying to support in regional australia obviously there is like yes you're right i have i use so much um data and I've actually got, I don't think it's here, I've got a remote um, a remote sort of internet thing that I take with me everywhere, which makes mm -hmm. working kind of easy. Um, but yeah, it, it like, you know, it is that thing where um, so many, so often I've just had to adapt to, you know, you're talking to someone on the road, you lose them for half an hour, then you kind of, you get them back up. I think, to be honest, whilst it can be frustrating, I do think it adds to 
that resilience that I'm talking about and probably what makes our media makers so efficient and seamless is that the problems that they come up against are um, like so much bigger relatively mm. to the problems in the city. So when they're like in a lot of situations, we have to ask our media makers to be super flexible and agile and do stuff that's, um, you know, like they're really having to be really autonomous with stuff because we don't work in an office. I can't, I have to trust, I have to trust that. Mm. And so I, I've just found that their ability to cope in challenges is incredible because I think they, they're challenged every day. Like you said, that, I mean, that's a small example, but it has a really big effect because particularly because our photographers all have to upload raw files or the videographers are uploading um, live files as well. And when you're just, you know, if there's a, t a deadline and you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't have, you can't rely on that, it just, it's just extra pressure. So yeah, they've become like everyone sort of ha has had to adapt to it. So when the conditions are easy, it's just like walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Beck. And look, this isn't the ABC. We can put in a bit of a plug. Your production company is called Cockatoo Collab. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And how how can people find that? And get in touch with you. Absolutely. Yeah, just online, just our website, I think is www.cockatoocolab.com. Um, and then we've got our series coming out next year, which will be Homespun. So look out for that. Um, yeah. yeah, or on or online as well, where Rural Room, so that's R-U-R-A-L and then Room, R-O-O-M. It's a bit of a tongue twister to say rural room, <laughs> so I have to kind of spell yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was born with some trouble with R's and L's, so that's really yeah. sort of a stay away phrase. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> but no, that's excellent. Um, and look, if you want to flick us a note about that series, we'll be very happy to help promote it on our social media. That would be wonderful. And thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat with me. I really love it's it. It's a pleasure. Of what you're doing. It's, it's been real fun, Beck. Thank you very much for joining us. And it's, it's a wonderful story. This, this deserves you. a big audience, this story of yours. So, oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for joining us in the Upland Zoom room. Thanks, Beck, Beck, Ian. Thanks for having me. See ya.